All right, I just wanted to show the nature's uh, nature's generator and uh, wind turbine that's freaking spinning like crazy. Like I said, I live in Daly City near the coastline, and we just get nothing but wind. Nothing but hey, there's my neighbors. Do you see that? He has a wind turbine too. There. He doesn't get as much wind as I get from up higher up here. And there's someone. I don't know if my camera can pick it up. See that blue house right there? There is a wind turbine over there, way in there. I don't know if we can tell. It's not really the most powerful phone camera out there. I just wanted to show the, the setup right now, loose setup. See? I just got a couple masonry blocks on a one and a half inch pole that uh, I put the uh, nature's generator on there, or nature's 400 watt wind turbine. I also have my EcoFlow up here on the top that's been giving them power. In the summer, it's gotten over 330 watts out of 400. That, uh, that's part of the nature's generator uh, solar panel. I just stuck it over there, the background there. I think it's fine. It's not blowing, but this this guy, woo, this guy just blows for days, non-stop. This is just, I haven't seen it slow down hardly anything. It's supposed to have a, a anti-reverse, all this stuff. Um, very simple stuff. Everything I found in Lowell's, not Home Depot, unfortunately. It's just a, a pipe that I, I, I use a cutting wheel and I cut a hole in the side so that I can run uh, uh, the wire that goes underneath and out the side and out over here and then just run zip ties and through the house where I had the existing uh, MC4 for the EcoFlow, which is plugged in the back of the EcoFlow. And uh, that's the 100 watt solar panel that it came with and I just stuck it up there for now. I'll do something with it. I I'm, I'm gonna probably stick it up and then, you know. Like I said, we don't get a lot of sun here in Daly City. Now this is just high clouds, but normally it's fogged and socked in, but what we do get, and you can't feel it, I'm pretty cold right now and clammy, it's a, uh, it's breeze, you get lots of breeze. So, right now, you can probably hear it too through the phone, so sorry for the wind noise, but it also gives you a, a good interpretation of wind over here, so that's pretty cool. Now I got the power of the wind. All right, I just noticed uh, our wind turbine wasn't spinning this morning. And it is a little breezy out here, but I, I just kind of uh, adjusted it. I'm, I'm just moving it away from the wind right now so it won't spin on me to show this example real quick. Um, so what I did was uh, um, I used a leveler, and that's what I should have done. So make sure it's leveled here and this side, this direction here because I noticed the wind turbine was tilted downward because of our roof design and I just laid the flat board here with all the cinder blocks and I realized it wasn't uh, spinning the um, the wind turbine like it's very sensitive it's not leveled you know like my neighbors way down there you see it's spinning see see right now if I hold this down they'll start spinning too but uh yeah so just just let you know um, this is a one and a half inch pull from uh, um, Lowell's. And then they have that little rubber mount piece that goes underneath. And all I did was, uh, you know, included in the kit is this rubber piece, you know, the sound dampener. And I just left the little plastic cap that came with it on the screw top. Uh, it, it was threaded at the top of this pole. And I left the plastic screw tap and then I, I wrapped the, um, the little dampener rubber that comes with the kit and uh, um, just tightened it down. And uh, and then I just got the pull down here. And like I said, I used a cutting wheel uh, uh, and just cut this out so the, the wire can come out here. And I just put some, um, I just cut some uh, bars and drilled some holes through here. And I have washers at the bottom and top um, of this assembly in a one, one and a half inch little flange that has two parts to the hole. That's what I wanted, at least double, not one. So this got a good, a fair amount on here. And then, you know, these things weigh almost 40 pounds each, uh, these cinder blocks, and I just four-corner this thing, and it should be, uh, 
you know, it should uh, basically, um, yeah, last night was the proof. It, it, it was a, like 35 mile, 40 mile gust. We got right over the rooftop of the house. And, uh, you know, you stick your head out, you can hear this thing like spinning like mad. But, um, yeah. Anyways, yeah. So I, this is this is just this wasn't a big deal to put together. It just takes a little time and planning. But if I know this now, of course I would do this in way less time. Buy all the components that you need. I, I bought the 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 um, those bolts. What were they? Three eighths. Um, they at the store they didn't have like two inches or two and a halfs. They were out, so I had to double triple up on washers. And I have a lock washer at the top end of it too as well. So. Um, you know, you have to improvise sometimes and just get a bunch of washers to stack. But um, of course, most of you will uh, like with my board was a three three and a quarter inch thick board, and uh, um, and I sprayed it with Rust-Oleum, you know, white Rust-Oleum, so it just reflects light, and and uh, it would cured in 15 minutes and dried, and uh, you know, it makes the board pretty much weatherproof. So that's what I did, and then I have the wire running down and across the side of the house. I also have their little solar panel too. Oh, and there's the eco flows as well, absorbing that sunlight. So my shadow's blocking it right now. I'm holding the fin right now, so <laughs> of course uh, it doesn't, you know, blow in the direction it's going to and whack me in the head. But anyways, I hope this was uh, somewhat informative and helpful. Material cost for all this, um, just for parts. I had scrap wood, so it's not fair to say about that. So. Yeah, I had scrap wood. Um, the, that little plate right there, those things that from Lulz, I think that cost like five bucks. That bracket down there that holds the, the pull, that thing was like less than ten bucks. And then of course the bolts and knickknacks and stuff, they were pennies of the dollar. I think it was like five dollars worth of, of hardware. And then the pull itself was actually kind of spendy, this galvanized pull that's one and a half. That thing was like forty bucks, forty-two bucks, one and a half. Um, this is a, a, a 36 inch pole. That's all I needed for the roof. Like I said, everyone's going to have a different setup than me and someone else going to get a 30 foot pole. So of course this company is not going to include a pole. Everyone has various degrees of what they want to hook this thing up to. You know, I want to be able to like take this down if I needed to or, you know, just if I want to service. I, I don't know. I just, uh, this, this is all like kind of permanent temporary if, you know, for lack of better term. And uh, so I designed it that way. So, yeah, you can see the blades going. Uh, like, I know there's a lot of YouTube videos of people talk about birds getting whacked. But hopefully, I mean, they thought of that. They got the red uh, uh, labels on the turbine. Oh, boy, it's spinning now. See, it's spinning a lot faster than my neighbors up there, which it should. But, of, of course, it might be the MPPT downstairs, you know, built into... The, this thing is spinning so fast right now, but I know the camera is probably making it look like it's super slow. But you can probably hear it. Hear the noise. But it, it's spinning. Now Now it's slowing down a little bit. Like I said, I'm holding it. There's, there's swirls of wind around. But this thing's spinning a lot faster than my neighbor's, which it should because from up here. But like, see his is slowing down because maybe he has a... What do you call it? Um, maybe he doesn't have a dump load. So... You know, different uh, systems have different stuff, and you know you might have a brake system. But I know, I know, our I think uh, Nature's Generator. They'd have to confirm though. If someone wanted to chime in from Nature's Generator, that'd be cool. Um, I mean, when this thing slows down and stops spinning, and that one's spinning, it's because you know it's either braking or or it's um, you know the battery's full downstairs. You know that's why it just braked it to stop because it can't take any more battery. But we are running a, a, a little electric heater along with the EcoFlow. And this thing, the Nature's Generator, is charging the EcoFlow. So maybe when it drains a little bit, then it starts flowing some more and releasing the brake. But right now, I don't feel any breeze up here in the top of my roof. But he must have some breeze. Okay, I see, I see someone's lower stuff actually blowing around that laundry. And then so maybe it's on a lower part of that, that wind channel over there that he's, he's discovered. 
But um, maybe I have this fat tree in the way. I mean, I don't know. We have neighbors' houses. But anyways, I hope this was informative. Thanks for watching. Like I was saying about this nature's generator, I just wanted to show what exactly I did. Um, this is exactly what I wanted to do off grid so we can power the heater that's running the line over there so um, my wire can be warm. Um, the idea is that it shows, oh, it's full right now. Huh, hilarious. <laughs> okay, so everything's full right now. Very interesting. Cool. But um, yeah, so this, the EcoFlow, oh, no wonder. See, output right here. There's zero output coming out. This is full. This was charging earlier with that uh, wind turbine going. I also have a, um, a Wemo to, to um, control turning that on and off if I need to. Um, yeah, this is charging up the EcoFlow full. Um, this can provide 1,800 watts. And uh, this can take like 1,600 watts of charging all at once. So now I have the inverter plugged in the back of the EcoFlow. I have wind right there, input and solar input, along with EcoFlow's uh, solar input in the back as well. So all this is now um, running off grid. And uh, yeah, this makes it a lot easier than building out your um, entire setup like I originally was going to do. Anyways. Just doing this for documentary makes it a lot easier. All right, I wanted to show real quick. I turned on this uh, space heater. This takes about a thousand watts, I believe. I plugged it into the EcoFlow. Show examples. No, it's about 960. So right now this is providing the power. See, somewhat accurate. See, now when it's using power and the battery is draining, I just wanted to see, and the uh, um, the wind turbine is now, the icon is on. Just wanted to show that. And since there's no sun outside right now, of course, none of the uh, solar panels are, are on or working. But earlier today, when I just plugged it in, it did show a um, solar icon right there. Looked like a solar panel underneath that wind turbine. And of course, the same goes for the EcoFlow. If the sun was out, solar panels appear right here on this spot. If it's going so right now this is uh the wind turbines providing power to this heater which is making the house warm yep we live in a place in the bay area where basically you have no central heating in a home you have to use space heaters which is dangerous but also you know you have to be around when you're using it you definitely don't want to be using it oh look at that fans kind of kicking on maybe it's getting a little warm so it, it regulates its temperature. See, it's using, it says it's using like almost max, but it says this can pump out 1800. So it's very interesting. That's why if, uh, if someone wanted to do this, maybe you can consider the Elite model. I think that has like 30 something hundred watts of capacity. But this is a, uh, this was a nice little package from Amazon. That's a good start for uh, renewable energy. It's, it's kind of good to see the wind turbine is working. Anyways.